Hello, my name is Jimmy, and today you join me in the 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLS. This is the GLS 450. Mercedes calls it the S-Class of SUVs, and it's easy to see why. It certainly has all the class and tech to make it the S-Class. I recently did a review on the GLA, the GLB, the GLC, as well as the GLE. So it's basically the entire Mercedes SUV lineup, minus the G-Wagon. We'll get to that shortly. Let's start with this looks. In some ways, the GLS looks like a bigger version of the GLE. It has traditional Mercedes trademark grille and lovely LED headlamps. One thing to note, while this is supposed to be the S-Class of SUVs, it's missing that three LED stripe that is traditionally found in the S-Class. Nevertheless, these headlamps are very, very cool looking and they do illuminate the road very well. From the side, the GLS looks like any other SUV on the road, smaller box on top of a bigger box but Mercedes has added some styling touches to the body to make it a little bit more unique, like these fender flares. I love the fender flares that's on this. They actually flare out, making the stance a bit more aggressive. Housing these flares are 21 inch AMG wheels. You can get up to 23 inch wheels on this, and there's some aggressive tires as well. The fronts, they're 275 sections, and the rear, they're 315. That's like stupidly wide but that's probably why the rear fender flares are actually real and very useful here. What's not so real are the rear exhaust tips, or should I say, to some chrome bits. These chrome finishers on the back are attached to the bumper, but the exhaust itself, well, it's just hanging down below. But who's looking up the GLS's rear end when you can be looking at the amazing taillights that's back here? Obviously the tailgate is powered. What kind of peasant would open a tailgate manually? With the rear hatch open, it reveals quite a large usable space. Even with the third row in place, there's 355 liters of cargo space. That's enough for all my camera gear. Best yet, underneath the rear floor, you can house a tunnel cover and a little bit more storage here. And for easier access, the rear end can kneel down to make it just a little bit easier to load items in and out. Speaking of easy, with the press of a few buttons, the third and the second row can electronically fold flat, revealing up to 2,400 liters of space. Plenty to haul whatever fancy items a GLS owner would likely buy. But when you're done hauling it all, you don't have to call someone to pull the seats up because you can press a button and they come up automatically as well. Let's jump into that third row and start from there. Getting in and out isn't hard, but it does take a while. The second row seats here are electronically powered, so it moves up and out of the way, but it just takes quite a bit of time. What's nice though is the second row here are caps and chairs, which means you can jump in and out of the third row using the little aisle in the middle instead. Once in the back, it's not bad at all. The seats are plenty comfortable and there's more than enough headroom. Knee room is a little limited as we would expect, but you can move the second row forward to balance things out. But as said, the seat mechanism is just dreadfully slow, so that can take a while. As for the second row seats, these optional captain chairs are very, very nice. The armrest on the middle is a nice touch, and the seats are heated. Speaking of heated, the armrest on the door is also heated for maximum comfort. The example that we have here has the optional premium package, which includes powered second row seats, four zone climate control, as well as soft closed rear doors, which obviously is a must in the S-Class of all SUVs. For the occupants up front, the seats are nice and wide, but not as soft as I may like. This specific vehicle is not optioned with the comfort package, so it doesn't have the massaging seats nor the upgraded leather. But we still have heated and cooling surfaces for those hot summer days, which is definitely a nice touch. For now, since it's winter, I truly enjoy these heated surfaces. And just like the middle row, it's not only the seats, but also the armrest as well as the center console are heated. As for everything in front of the driver, it's pretty typical 2020 Mercedes. We have two large display, one for the cluster and one for the infotainment. The large surrounds beside the display that technically look like vents, they're, well, not. They're just a slotted panel. These vents do lack the beauty and elegance found in some other Mercedes products, but the rest is really, really nice in here. We have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but sadly, it doesn't span the entire screen. It just houses it within the center itself. Sadly, I don't have a USB-C to lightning cable with me, and that brings me to the next thing. The GLS, it does have a bunch of USB ports, but all of them, they're all USB-C. So, do prepare yourself a big dongle order from Amazon just to make sure your devices can plug into the vehicle. Under the hood of the GLS 450, we have a 3-liter turbo inline 6. With a curb rate of 5,500 pounds, you would think that the 6-cylinder would have some problems hauling it around but it's actually still able to launch to 62 miles per hour in just over six seconds. That's actually not too bad. 
With 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque, the engine actually packs a decent punch. For those who want a little bit more, you can opt for the GLS 580, which comes with 483 horsepower and 516 foot-pounds of torque from a twin-turbo V8, which is capable of launching the GLS in about 5.3 seconds to 62. That's quite impressive, but no matter which engine you choose, you can still tow 7,700 pounds. That's a lot of weight behind this inline six, but it shows that it's capable of doing it. And I actually believe them because this engine, it's truly remarkable. I actually really, really love the EQ type engines. I first had a chance in it in the E53 AMG and it was smooth, it was powerful, and it delivered great economy. For a vehicle of this size and weight, 15 liters per 100 kilometers is remarkable. It's definitely not something I was expecting. On the road, the suspension of the GLS is quite good. Even the base GLS 450 that we have here does have standard air suspension. So it's like floating on a cloud. If you get the 580, you can get the E-Active suspension. And well, there's a camera that's up here that reads the road and it's able to kind of modulate the suspension and well, really give you a much better ride. And it has a kind of like a party trick where it can kind of bounce. It's really designed for you to get in and out of a sticky situation, but it just looks cool. Something that you immediately would notice when driving the GLS is just how quiet the cabin is. It's insulated really well from the outside, so outside noises are quite reduced, and it's actually just a nice place to be in. The engine is hush and, well, it's able to coast before it comes to a complete stop, so it completely shuts the engine off for maximizing efficiency. And of course, you can get the GLS with all the safety features, so uh, collision mitigation braking, lane keep assist, and well, all that good stuff. It works really well. I'm able to kind of take my hands off the wheel for short periods of time. It's even able to, well, steer and actually go into different lanes as well. It's actually a really good system and it takes the stress off of, you know, long distance driving. If you're going on like longer journeys and road trips, this will be a great vehicle for that. Overall, the GLS is an amazing three-row SUV. With the base price of 96,000 Canadian, it's certainly not that bad. But once you start stacking on the options, well, that's a different story. I was playing around with the configurator online and I stacked on all the options on the GLS 580 and it comes to $152,000. At that price, you can get some cool things like massaging rear seats, a 3D Burmeister audio system, and even that e-active body control that we found in the Mercedes GLE. So how does it compare? The GLS is a great SUV, it truly is. It's definitely more defined as a comfort vehicle rather than a sporty one that the X7 is more based on. Is it a true competitor to high-end three-row SUVs? I truly think so. Germans definitely do things a little bit different than the American counterparts. The Navigator or the Escalade, well, they certainly are nice and large and comfortable, but it doesn't have that appeal that the GLS does. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video. Like the video if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know where your thoughts are on the GLS in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Take care.